two. Let's look at this uh, FreeJS landing page code. Uh, first, we want to look at the actual uh, two demos that I've got up, I suppose. So this first one is <coughs> my favourite, actually. Uh, it's a scene that generates lots of cubes in a space, black space, and then uh, creates a sort of weird post-processing digital glitch effect that sort of runs on the screen every eight or six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight seconds or so. Every eight seconds or so it does this, as you can see, this sort of glitch effect, which is uh, uh, coming from the FreeJS. So I'll show you how that's done in a second. And then the demo two. What's the demo two? So we come up. Demo two. So this is the one we actually used in that. Because they first used this in a commercial setting, but uh, I've stripped all that out. But um, so this is well, based on the mouse movement, it moves these lines that have been generated. Uh, also, of course, it's got a counter. Um, so I've set the timer to October 31st, 2019. So I'll show you how that's done if you want to change the time on the landing page code. So yeah, so I thought this would be quite a cool little project to uh, talk about how I did it. I did this during a time when I was working for a startup design agency uh, and I've just modif I've modified this code to make it more like a template so anybody can use it and uh, yeah it should be useful for some I mean you could gen change the backgrounds as well mess around with all those things anyway without further ado let's look at the code okay so within the uh, uh, git repo which is down below which i'll link to uh there's a few different files i'm stripping some of this out in a minute so some of my like logo dark and stuff might get rid of but uh apart from that it should all be in there yep uh animated free js landing page template with counter one page under page with uh using free js and javascript so we've got two demos, index HTML, which is just a bare bones HTML page, and then this demo to, without further ado, let's just get into it. So we've got a bunch of dependencies here, which are coming from FreeJS. Starts I don't use actually, but um, so obviously you have to have a reference to FreeJS in there. So we've got FreeJS modified module, I think need as well. I'm not sure if I need it. I might be required. We'll get ahead of myself. So we've got the JS free depend JS uh, free JS dependencies there in the JavaScript folder I've put in. Uh, that I'm gonna get rid of. Uh, um, one CSS file and a lot of the actual uh, scene itself is generated in the index HTML, which as you'll see. So let's look over some of it a bit. So we have our dependencies loaded in here. It's quite a lot because this one has a few different um, less on here, as you can see, of the two demos. So on the first demo, it's got that glitch effect, and we need uh, a lot of these dependencies for those to work. Demo 2 has less, so it's only got two uh, specific library dependencies there. Uh, a lot of that when you work with FreeJS is just experimentation, looking at the documentation and sort of messing about. And of course, we've got the reference to I'm not, I could have used the minified version, actually, probably sh could do, but I'm not. Um, but yeah. Uh, so there's a little bit of um, CSS added here as well, and I'll pay from here. I had to build this quite fast, and it's not exactly perfect, but you get the idea. Um, so let's look at the actual logic behind the first one, which is the one with 3D cubes. And uh, <coughs> uh, 
to it, I'll show the time and stuff. So we've got some variables defined here for the camera scene, Raycaster, globally defined, uh, mouse, some other things, glitch pass, which is to do with the proof processing. And then three functions run initiate, start time, and animate, which are all below. So, sorry, the dog is making some noise. Um, so, I'll stop it. Start time. Shush. Start time. This is the all code logic for uh, setting the time and then having the time over and down. So the things you want to look at is our well, countdown date, which is the end date. Date October that set it to 2019, October the 31st, so a bit of time on it. Originally it was set to 2018, the original version, but it's by the way. Now, variable now, which is just the current time. And then this bit, var the distance, which literally just works out the distance, which is two dates. So countdown date, take away now. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, and then this is breaking it all down. So you want to break those units down because that's going to give you a large digit. So we do a floor funk method here and divide by, so this is the days, divide 1000 times 60 times 60 times 24 and so on and so on for hours, minutes and seconds. Not the milliseconds, I don't think it's required. I think I did it originally and then uh, the guys were looking for it would be a bit over the top. And then all that, do, all that happens is there's a element uh, timer uh, with element ID of uh, timer, element of it, element ID of timer, sorry, I'm going to just distracted by the dog. And then this adds. The, it adds some HTML to that element based on that. Kind of launch, da, 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 da. Yes, then you can split it out into days based on the variables defined above hours, etc. etc. So that probably makes sense. Also, there's an if statement in here, so it's a conditional to check if the distance is zero, i.e., if the date. From the the end date and the current time is uh, if there's no distance between those two things, then it just prints out a message saying uh, countdown expired. So that hopefully should make sense. It's ba it's basically breaking down time now, what the time is now, and a time in the future, and comparing them. So this this is fairly self-explanatory. That's the timing function. That's about as complicated as it gets really for that part um but then the first function we've got running here is a free js so let's look at that a bit now the way i've done it in here is creating a lot of the uh, i think this is one that's quite new to free js so i think you could probably do this differently but i'm creating all the uh, divs and things in javascript in the init initiate function you don't necessarily have to do that but that's the way i've done it here and then i've also added some styling for these here, it's probably a bit of a complicated way to do it, but to where I did it in the example, just, you could make it better. Just take that one there, yeah. uh, it's not needed anymore. Originally had a logo, but I just replaced it with a H1 uh, element. Um, time and style position, blah blah blah. So this is all very self explanatory. Uh, what we're really interesting is so I'll compare both these initiate initiate methods for demo one and two because they're slightly different. So creating a camera, uh, this is a pending container is appending these to uh, okay, don't worry about that. 
Do, do, do. So this is sort of going over stuff from covered in the last video, but here we have the new camera, new scene, background color, uh, some lights, uh, and this is similar to what we had before in the other video. So VAR geometry is just creating some box buffer. Uh, a box buffer, which is a better way to do it in FreeJS. You can you can just create with box geometry, but creating as a box buffer geometry is a more efficient way of doing it. Apparently, I read recently. Uh, so equally sided, uh, and then there's a for loop to create two files under these objects. So these are the boxes you see floating when you first go into the, the landing page, and then some randomized positioning. Uh, so following a math random function uh, that's the actual this here is the that's the geometry that's created in this new mesh so it takes this and then colouring it there with Lambert material and then there's some rotation set up for each one and then you add the object so that this is a fun part of it when you really doing it you can experiment a lot of that like colours and adding different things based on requirements. So da, 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 da. last move post processing is here. So this is the part for the adding the glitch fits. Uh so composer, we've got a new effect composer, which creates a new uh, instance of this, which will create uh, add these effects to the renderer. Add new pass, which is one of them, and then glitch pass as well. And then the update options, which is so that. That. And this isn't worth getting over, it's just uh, that's the animation function, and then that's actual rendering there. A lot, I don't I know, I don't know in and out of everything this is doing, I'm just sort of giving an overview of how you can modify it. It's gonna be simple if you wanted to like change, you could add spheres instead, so sphere. So box buffer geometry and then if I go to demo one I should add that so it's added spheres now instead you could change it to well odd spheres but you could also change this to something like instead of uh, color is here of a, it's like grey here, so if I could change that to like red, maybe it could be maybe to this. I think this will work. Yeah, so look, you can change it to a different colour as well. That's just a standard colour. Red's not very good, really, because it's just you can change it to green. So if you're messing around with the demo, this is the full part of it, right? Yeah, 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 green. It must be able to do that. Change it back to a square as well. Box. That's pretty cool. It's almost like a matrix sort of effect. I might keep that for now. You can't really see the effects as well, so just... It sort of gives an example of how simple it can be just to mess around with all this stuff. Let's just check this reset back. There we go. I quite like the grey sparse. So it's almost done now. Let's just have a quick look at demo two. Uh, it's page demo two. Just change that. So we'll change that uh, same, same setup really starts the same uh, it just creates lines instead of 
but yeah, so we've got some Pi times two, so radius circle times two material, sprite compass material. So this is this is where the points are being created. So I could do more probably if I do like the end of this look at that. Yeah, like that. I should create yes, as you can see it's denser lines now. It's the density of the lines there and the uh, if statement Put this to really high, like 600 or something. Probably create, yeah, so you can say it's even more dense there. To can modify that. Uh, uh, you've got. You can randomize this a bit. So we can fly instead of. So you should see this there. So this is creating a lot, so this is probably creating a load. To be slightly different positioning. That's part of that. So you could do it line. Sort of like a lot more off centre there, you can see. Sort of cool actually. Clustered in the middle. That's too much. If anyone knows a more efficient way of doing these things, because obviously the for loops might be quite intensive. Sometimes it's quite intense for a new GPU or CPU. Um, just change that back. So yeah, I don't know exactly everything that's going on there, but it's it just basically creates. Uh -huh. And you've got these event listeners for um, so these functions here. What creates the following the uh, mouse around? I guess. And it's dogging to walk now. Okay, so I've talked for twenty minutes about this. I've tried to cover most of it. A lot to cover in this. If you want to go really in depth to it, so if you look in the main CSS, there's some. Uh, Basic responsiveness for the CSS setup, for the layout setup. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. I know it's been like 18 minutes long, so it's been a bit long, but I want to give a decent overview of the entire thing. Uh, I've been the one nerd. Uh, thanks for watching.